I've been using Adobe Photoshop for over 20 years, and just recently, thanks to some videos by Deke McKellen and others, I've noticed that maybe Affinity has the option to do some better things. Let's look at seven ways that Affinity is better than Photoshop. This had better be good. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. The first of the seven ways that Affinity is better than Photoshop is the text size option. Now the text is in the way bottom. Now we're gonna go ahead and click Artistic Text, text Tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and click. And now the nice thing is I can click and drag to start the text box size. So I can automatically add the size the way I want it. Go there and I can now start to type A, B, C, and one, two, three if I so choose. So that's great. It's editable to size. I can also go ahead and select my text. I can come up to my size and I can choose the same similar options like photo. 2 billion, 147 million, 483,647. That's a big number. Very, very big number of the size of the text. Uh, useful? Probably not necessarily going to need anything bigger than 2.1 billion size my font of my text, but it is an option uh, there. Larger than I need? Uh, possibly. Photoshop, though, on the other hand, only lets me get to 1,296. So if I go to text count here, I can't do the click and drag to get my file size. I can click a box, but it just remembers whatever file size, font size I've had already, which in this case was 18 point. Uh, and so I can go ahead and find the point, points here, or I can type up and it will limit me to 1,296. Not awful. I probably don't use that a whole lot more to have a bigger font size, but there are times you might want this large dominant font of 5, 6, 8, 10,000 pixels to have an interesting clipping mask or for quality sake. Now, could we do it technically? I suppose we could come up here and do our ABC. And we can go ahead and do a uh, rasterize and we could stretch the text. No longer editable, not the same. So there's ways around that by rasterizing your text. Uh, but it's not a great option, I don't think, uh, because it does limit you a bit on your text ability in Photoshop. Reason number two why Infinity is better than Photoshop is the option for live filters that are editable throughout the layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in a to the top of my layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a live filter. Photoshop will call them usually smart objects. If you want to go edits for certain options. I hit live filter. I click here and I have a lot of the same options you're going to see in Photoshop. In fact, pretty much all the same ones. Uh, there's a few extra ones that I've not even experimented with. Well, let's say we're going to do something with blur. Gaussian blur. I want to blur the whole picture. I'm going to go ahead and make it a fairly extreme blur so you can tell it on the screen. Now here actually it's not doing much because it's actually applied to this layer, how they do a clipping mask. I'm going to go ahead and move it out on its own layer. And look, the Gaussian Blur is now here, but the beautiful thing is it is non-destructive. Photoshop does non-destructive layers, but if you want to blur a layer and put it at the top, you can't do that in Photoshop. I can go ahead and put this now in between my layers in different portions will have different amounts of blur. Or if I say I just want to blur uh, the image here of the guy, go ahead and drag it in here. And now the guy is blurry but it's very flexible as I move it from layer to layer to make it so it's the effect, whether it's a blur, whether it's a color technique, uh, it's going to affect everything. Now Photoshop will do that for a few things, but it will not do it for most things. I've got my different layers. If I want to go ahead and blur a layer, I cannot blur all the layers together equally in a non-destructive manner. I can come up here and do a blur. It will technically affect this light only filter. I'll go ahead and just do a crazy amount of Gaussian blur like I did in the last one, so it's pretty obvious. And it's only blurring this layer, and it is destructive. It actually didn't do it as a non-destructive. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here. I can make it a smart object, convert to smart object, and then I can do my blur, add my blur back in. The problem with that now, it's only applying to this layer. I can't make it apply to all the layers. That is probably the biggest thing I don't like about Photoshop compared to Infinity. I think Infinity definitely takes the powerhouse cake on what they call smart objects, smart filters, Affinity calls it live filters, very editable, very adjustable, uh, well done Affinity, definitely the prize goes to on live filters for non-destructive editing. Number three, the zoom range. Now this might be somewhat trivial to some extent, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what Affinity allows you to do. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, control plus is a way to zoom in just like you would do in Photoshop. 
Control plus, I can zoom in and continue to zoom in for pixel editing. I can zoom in 2 billion times. I get that's a little bit excessive because most of our files, I've never used a file that's probably had more than 100, 150 megapixel. So I'm zooming in way more than one pixel, uh, which is probably overkill. I would definitely agree. See what Photoshop can do compared to 2 billion zoom. Same picture, zooming in, shortcut, control plus. That's nice to have some similarities there. I can only go to 12,800. I can see pretty much every pixel on my screen on a 4K monitor, but I'm not able to see the pixel by pixel editing that infinity affords and it lets me do. So maybe it doesn't matter to go that far, but the ability to be able to zoom in to push your resolution so I can see one pixel on the screen to fill my entire monitor as one pixel is definitely the win for an infinity. Why Photoshop doesn't let it go a little bit more? I don't know. It seems to be a little, a little bit limited on what it allows you to do. Next up for infinity, number four is going to be the option for the adjustment layers. Now adjustment layers are the same option, the same call here. If I go and hover over this little half moon yin yang sign, I hit adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer. I actually have 23 different adjustment layers. Compared to Photoshop, it actually has 19 Photoshop layers. These last four, we typically don't see as a Photoshop filter, actually about four or five here that are not in Photoshop. So there's some extra ones. I haven't explored much of the options, but a lens filter, Photoshop has that, but it's not as an adjustment layer and uh, the ability to use some of these options all as adjustment layers. A few more tricks up your sleeve for options you can bring in as adjustment layers is a nice option. Photoshop, do an adjustment layer, looks similar, which is good. There's a lot of similarities here. I don't have as many, I have 19. I'm losing the last section of adjustment layers uh, brought to you that Affinity does very well. Side by side comparison. A few more, it doesn't put them in categories, so it just puts them in one large level and they are organized a little bit differently. But for the most part, uh, it does have, I think, some better selection of tools, things you might want to actually use in the real editing of a photo. Number five for things that Affinity does better than Photoshop. We're gonna go ahead and look at the ability to save my history panels. Now I can make all these edits and have all the different things that I've changed. Now the history panel is located a little more on the bottom of Affinity. Photoshop shows it up in the top corner for sure. But I have my option here. All of the things I've done in Affinity now that I've been doing this video are all layered here. I can go back and forth and do that option, which is great. Of course, Photoshop does the same thing. I can see all the different changes I've done and I have my option to go back and forth to different layers and see what I've done up to uh, 25 or more. If you set your settings, you can have more things in your history panel. Now here's the one that Affinity takes the cake on for sure. With the option, all the different changes I've done, I can actually save my file with the history intact. If I go up to file and I go save history with the document, I can hit save history with document. Yes, you want to save the history, um, everything that I've done in the past. Yes, so that's okay. I hit yes. So when I save this file, now that just did the setting, it's remembering the settings. When I hit save as or save, I hit save as, it will now save it. Now be aware it is an affinity file, it's not a Photoshop file. So if I go ahead and save this somewhere, go ahead and save it in my downloads. It's now affinity file, so I'm not going to be able to bring that back into Photoshop. But if you haven't been noticing, I've been using a Photoshop file in Affinity from the beginning. Affinity will actually open up Photoshop files. This is something I did in Photoshop seven years ago. It will open it up after the fact, which is pretty cool. So now if we go to Photoshop, I will say, well, I'll open up my affinity file. Go up to affinity find my file, it will not open it up because it's not compatible. So Photoshop is not compatible with Affinity, but Affinity technically can read your Photoshop file. So if you have Photoshop friends or people or work that you've done in Photoshop and you want to bring it back in, it is possible to open up your old Photoshop into Affinity, which is actually a really, really nice feature and it works pretty well in that option. Number six, I've been using Photoshop for about 25 years for the most part. And I would say that for the most part, the navigational options are a little simpler. Simplistic, there's more bright, colorful icons than you would see in Photoshop. But I think it does make a pretty good connection. Now let's compare what we have in Affinity. We have all the different options. We see the little triangle pattern, which it seems similar to Photoshop because it is. I can pull out, I can see many different options. But there are not as many tools. Everyone in Photoshop, for the most part, you can click open something different. Here there's not as many options, which I think in some aspects, not having as many tools isn't that bad. And 
in fact, is more freeing because you have more options to be able to play with. We look at Photoshop. Photoshop, pretty much everyone, not exactly everyone, but almost everyone has lots of tools hidden behind it. Now, there are more tools. You maybe you want to use some of these tools, like the Magic Wand tool. I never use that anymore because of quick selection tools. Uh, some of the lasso tools, maybe you want to use them. But there's lots of different options inside of them. Uh, so Photoshop does have more options because it's kept building for 30 plus years. It's been building and building options and keeping old options and adding new options along the way. So uh, that is probably a positive. There are some things there too. But uh, I think for the most part, the icons, the setup is similar and I think a little bit user friendly. It's its its own program. You have to learn the program, but I think it's a little more user friendly and it's simple to bring on into Photoshop. For example, my Dodge tool, it's taken from the old black and white darkroom days. The burn tool, instead of using the little hand, which technically is the way you burn, most people don't think of that anymore, 30 years since most people have been in a dark room. A burn tool looks like a blame of fire. A sponge is a little more options than a sponge, uh, where in Photoshop, that sponge, a little bit of those uh, abrasive bro uh, rocks that does your feet, takes off all the nasty dead skin. Uh, so. A little differences in comparison between Photoshop and Affinity in that regard. Uh, and another little option that goes along with the user uh, layout aspect. Uh, I'm going to go to a brush setting here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a black brush. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a hard brush. I get to see what it is doing right in the copy. Now as I adjust the hardness or the softness, you can actually see that in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and make it a uh, bigger brush here, go and create a new layer. You can see that option. I'm using shift and the bracket keys to adjust. You can see that change in there. We're in Photoshop. We go to a brush setting. You can see the brush is getting bigger, but you technically can't tell if it's getting softer or not. I'm using the bracket. Uh, shift and bracket tools to make it harder or softer. You see the brush gets bigger or smaller, but you can't actually see what you're painting until you actually paint. So now I know I have a hard brush. You can tell that from the top corner here, but I actually don't see it in my preview until I actually click and start to paint. We're in Infinity. I actually see it live preview whether I'm painting hard or I'm painting soft right in the camera. It's no surprise with number seven. The thing I like about Affinity Photo is we can own our software. We don't have to rent and subscribe to it for the rest of our lives and be held hostage, give them our right arm or right leg just to own a copy of the software. Photoshop has made some bad moves in how they're allowing people to not cancel and how they're using some of their AI privacy violations. I think the cases are clear. Affinity Photo is here to stay. Inconceivable. Thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and make a comment below. I'd love to have a discussion with you to figure out what you like and maybe what you don't like about Infinity Photo.